I had a car, and I put in a full tank of gas every Monday, so I could limp to work during the rest of the week. But this Monday morning, I sat there watching the numbers spin, until they hit $40, and when I dug my last two wretched 20s out of my pocket, and paid the guy inside, he didn't even look up from the floor. He wasn't reading anything, or talking to anyone or watching television. He was just staring at the floor. Looking at him, I realized that I wasn't going to work today. Damn work. Damn all of work. Damn every job that every person has ever had. My car was a burgundy Lincoln Continental that smelled like cherries and old lady perfume. The car didn't have any big problems yet, but little things were always snapping off of it. Like the radio knob, or pieces of the door handle, or flakes of rubber from the floor mat. I pulled out of the gas station, and I got onto the highway. Forty dollars didn't get me very far. Forty dollars got me to the next big town. Forty dollars of flat-out lane weaving drumming my hand on the wheel and cackling driving got me to a town with a big green highway sign instead of a little white one. I pulled over into the first restaurant that was one of a kind and parked in one of the back spaces. It was a place called the Border Grill, even though we had to be a thousand miles from any border that I knew of. The parking lot was completely empty, but the sign still set open, of course, now I was broke. I went inside the restaurant and slid into one of the middle booths. The whole place was empty. No waitresses, no cooks, no customers. The lights were on and the door was open and the pies in the case looked fresh, but I guess everybody was hiding in back, or else the place was some kind of social experiment. I want a hamburger, I thought to myself. I want a big hamburger with a bun so soft and greasy, that when you stick your thumbs in it, you make two dimples, and come away with sesame seeds like pupils under your fingernails. I also want some french fries cut like prisms and I want to dip them in mustard, and then I want to eat some apple pie and ice cream, and I want to take a scoop of that ice cream with my spoon and stick that ice cream in my coke. But how, was I gonna pay for it? I was glad the restaurant was empty. It gave me time to think, to weigh up my options. There was a jukebox. I had 35 cents in my pocket. The way I figured it, that was enough for one song in the jukebox. But before I could stand up and throw away the last thing I had in life, the waitress came out from the kitchen. She was 45 years old, but she looked like a beat up 35. Her mascara was thick, and it was the only makeup she wore. She looked pretty good, actually. It was easy to smile at her. She looked like the kind of grown-up woman who had a bank account that grew and grew, because she prayed to it once a week instead of going to church. You look like you are here to eat, she said, making it sound like a threat. I'm not here to teach school, you come off the highway, she said. So you don't know. What don't I know? The cook don't ever come in until afternoon, she said. He's supposed to be here at 9, but since there's never anybody in here in the morning, he never bothers getting in until lunchtime. Everybody knows that. I'm here. I can see that, she said. I can get you coffee and I can get you pie. How do you get to work? If you don't mind my asking. There's no cars out there in the parking lot but mine. I walk. She shifted her weight on her hip and her eyes fluttered as she smiled, are you saying I have to take my hard-earned money somewhere else? We ought to have some kind of sign, she said. I looked her over, and I saw that she was strong and funny. I knew that I was about to leave and go back home on stolen gas from the next gas station and grovel for my paper hat back. So this is what I said. You got a bank account, and I got a car. Why don't we do five things all in order here, since there isn't a cook, and no customers come in until noon and I can't get a hamburger which is what I really wanted and which is what I was gonna stiff you on, but now I can't even do that. Why don't I take the 35 cents in my pocket, which is all I have, and put on your favorite song in the jukebox? I don't know what it is, because I don't even know your name. And then why, don't I take you over to that booth by the window, and get your clothes off, and make love to you real slow to the beat of it, since nobody comes in until noon anyway, and fucking has got to be more fun than sitting back there or sneaking cigarettes, or whatever? 
and then we clean out the register and the safe, and then we clean out your bank account, and then we go see my Uncle Robert in Colchito who is not only a preacher, but he also smuggles drugs out of Mexico, and he would love to have a proper looking white couple, to sit on a kilo of weed and drive it to Austin every once in a while. And he'd pay us for that, pay us enough to live until my writing career takes off, or one of us gets cancer, which is inevitable, just look at us. You are trying to fuck me, by saying I'm about to get cancer, she said. I was just following my thoughts, I said. It's not like I planned this out. I would do everything you said right now, even though I've got a boyfriend. I would do everything you said, except for the fact that a song costs 50 cents on the jukebox, not a quarter. So you are 15 cents short, which means we can't even get started. I knew it, I said, standing up, while she laughed at me and poured me a small cup of coffee to go in a paper cup. I didn't bother asking what her favorite song was. I was trying to have a good time, not break my own heart.